Hey guys, I, ho I hope you're doing well. Um, I was thinking of um, what we're going through right now and when, as things started um, opening up, I, I thought of this title in my head, Coming Out of the Deep Freeze. Um, the deep freeze is kind of like not cold because it's not cold, it's summertime. It's coming out of when things have stopped and how do we slowly move around again. Um, and I just hear the Lord saying, <coughs> <coughs> To move with caution and expectation. First of all, move with caution. It means uh, physical caution, of course, with wearing masks and all that. But also in this time, move with spiritual caution. What I mean by spiritual caution, you hear a lot of things that, um, oh, this could be the end of times, Jesus could be coming any day now, and that all could be true, but the only person that knows that is Christ himself. Be very vigilant about who you listen to, what you listen to, um, uh, what kind of prophecy you're listening to. Um, first of all, when it comes to prophecy, ma <coughs> excuse me, make sure it lines up with the Word of God at all times. And sometimes uh, people try and twist the Word of God. So, Make sure when you're listening to some somebody or something, it uh, the words that come coming out uh, out of their mouths are first lining up with the scriptures and then resonating with your spirit, because a lot there are a lot of false teachings out there and false prophets. And as we come out, slowly come out of this uh, deep freeze, as I'm calling it, like where everything shut down, but as we slowly begin to move again, you'll begin to hear some stuff. And not all of it is of God. So try the spirit and make sure that it is of God. Make sure it be it bears witness first with the word and then with your spirit and um because sometimes it um what somebody's saying may have a bit of word in it but it may have more self in it than word and sometimes as christians if we don't know how to explain things sometimes we start making stuff out we pretend that we're, we um, pretend that we're God. And when, when God speaks, in my experience anyway, there is always a spiritual witness. It always bears a witness to your spirit. So I would say, when you think the Lord is speaking uh, through someone, Make sure it bears witness to your spirit and make sure it is in the Word of God and make sure there is no ulterior motive. What I mean by ulterior motive is some people may use the Bible in this time to get stuff from people. Um, they may say, uh, turn around three times and give me three hundred dollars and the Lord will bless you. That kind of manipulation and in times like the, these uh, when people are struggling 
and when people are looking for hope and something to grab on to, they might grab on to that and say, okay, the Lord will bless me if I give this um, person $300. And I know ministry ne needs money to survive. Boy, do we ever. <coughs> I'm okay. My throat's a little dry. Um, and I have allergies if you're wondering why I'm coughing. Um, it's, um, yeah, make sure what you're listening to, um, bears witness first with the word of God and then with your, with your spirit. And then coming out of the deep freeze, um, proceed with caution about, um, where you where you're going and how you move around both physically um of course take the precautions that they say in your city like w wear a mask and all that but more so we all know to do that for safety um but more so spiritually um like there's a lot of things coming now that the Lord is getting us ready for and sometimes people will try and um, they'll they'll get a bit of the truth and then they'll and then like I said before they'll mix stuff up so be careful um, be very careful about um, about wh what you're listening to and who you incline your ear to. It says incline your ear unto wisdom. And so, yes, that's what I mean. And, and one thing else about coming out of this deep freeze where everything stops and everything was frozen for a while um come out slowly see sometimes people come out of the deep freeze and they want it all at once but even in in this covid situation at least in toronto they're coming out in phases and the reason why they're coming out in phases if you come out slowly and there's a problem if you draw back then it's not going to be so bad but if you come out fast um, it's going to take a lot more work to um, draw back if he like I agree with throwing your whole self at something but when you throw your whole self at something that God has told you to do um, do it slowly unless you really feel to do it fast Especially when you're not sure of something, you think it's God, but you're not really sure. Don't don't throw your whole self at it. Throw money at it, and then and then um, find out that whoa, I've gone too far. Um, be cautious about it. Being cautious uh, or com coming at things slowly with measured um, with being measured doesn't mean you have less faith it just means you know that this might or might not be God so um, you you will proceed with caution and I'm not saying caution with your faith I'm saying caution with your resources and if one thing I know about God if, is if it's him, you'll know and he'll, you'll start slowly, but things will start happening. 
either slowly or quickly and you'll know it's him and he will give the resources um, God doesn't care about usually about the speed in which you do things but what what I mean about that I mean sometimes it, it needs to be done in haste like forgiveness or whatever but sometimes when it's something that needs to be done um, he doesn't mind if you proceed with caution if you take measured steps if you you know if you um, it's it's a risk but it's a calculated one um, so think things through before you do them and it, and if it's God he'll he'll take it over at some point and he will give the increase you don't have to spend all your money or do or or um, make your family homeless to uh, step out on faith sometimes God will ask people to do that but most times he'll ask people just to take a, 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 a action or maybe give them direction and they can do it slowly they can do it measured and sometimes he'll just ask you to do it and in that case he'll provide the resources so it works both ways but I'm just saying proceed with caution uh, not cautious like you are not going to do it because you're overthinking cautious because you, you are taking measured steps to do whatever God's called you to do and eventually you'll get to where God wants you to be anyway so why not take your time and be methodical with it not overthink it but um, prepare for it and uh, make sure you get wise counsel because I've been in this situation before where I thought God told me to do something it was all lining up but the problem with me is I didn't get wise counsel and that ended me up in trouble so sometimes when God is uh, telling you to do something big especially financially it is wise to get counsel um, in a multitude of counselors there is safety and in that counsel if they pray about the counselor, counsel you're supposed to get and in that counsel if it's God ordained counsel you will get tips you will find strength they will help you to figure out okay you want to do this um, this is how you do it and God will bring the counsel into your life whether it be financial counsel relational counsel uh, whatever counsel um, too many people just go out there and do stuff half cocked without any counsel they're like God told me to do this and yes he does tell you to do this but excuse me for saying this but he's he's not calling you to be stupid he wants you to be wise in everything you do and I'm not saying that sometimes he won't cause you to take really big crazy steps um, sometimes, sometimes he will but sometimes he will want you to especially when it comes to a lot of money uh, want you to uh, get the proper counsel get the proper things in, in place and take me measured risks 
Um, and the last thing about coming out of the deep freeze, understand that this, what I talked about a few years, a few weeks ago, was this time was a time of preparation. So all you've been preparing for, it is time to start putting those plans into into place. Um, and if you haven't start preparing, start writing it down, start, you know, speaking it, start talking to people about your vision. Not everybody, but just the people that God has ordained to help you. And ask God about who he's ordained to help you bring this vision to pass. And wait for him. And I know waiting is the hardest thing. But in the waiting, he's building character. Waiting builds muscle. Um, uh, when you're working out, um, they say the greater the resistance, the greater um, the muscle building, or the greater the tension, the greater the muscle building. A lot of people don't want tension in their lives. When they sense tension, they run. But anybody who works out will tell you, um, when you feel the tension, you know that things are working. If you don't feel tension and it's too easy, uh, it may be easy, but it's not doing anything for you. So sometimes God pit, puts storms and, t and tension to build muscle. You need tension to build muscle. You need adversity to build physical muscle, and you also need it to be, to build spiritual muscle. So all all of this COVID stuff, however it's affecting you, it's building the world's muscle. It's building the world's tension so that next time we be more able to handle what we what we need to handle and it's also teaching us stuff it is teaching pastors how to preach without uh, people in the room it is teaching leaders how to uh, business owners how to lead it is teaching people that never work from home to work from home it's teaching moms how to how to manage their kids at home it's teaching medical professionals, especially, how to manage a big crisis. This is all teaching us something. And that will, every lesson um, is for a greater blessing later on. So what it's teaching us is that um, whatever is teaching us, because it's all all teaching us different things at different times, it will lead to something um, greater later on. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me for the for these like um, I think about fifteen minutes, maybe a little more. Talk soon. Bye. God bless. Thank you. See you later, guys. I hope you coming come out of the deep freeze. I pray that you come out of this deep freeze 
or this frozen space and time stronger, better, better, more spiritually healthy, more physically healthy, more emotionally healthy. I think that that Corona stopped us to get us healthier, to get us more aware. I think it took a world stop for us to really examine our lives. And I hope you took this time to examine your life. And as you come out of this deep freeze, do not forget what you learned because God is going to use it for something greater. Whatever it is, whatever you learn, God is going to use this lesson for something greater. You did go through this for nothing and you don't have permission to die here. What I mean by die is you don't have permission permission to emotionally die, to spiritually die, to financially die. I'm going to say this once. Live. I'll say it again. Live. What, whatever dead thing I command it to go and I command that you will live by the power of the Holy Spirit. Rise and walk in this newness of life that God has given you. God has not called you to, to have a cast down head. Lift your head and know that God is with you. Know that he sees you. Know that he hears you. Know that he sees every tear. And rise to this newness of life that he's given you. He died for you. He loves you. He loves those children. He sees what you're going through as a mom. He sees what you're going through as a dad. He sees what you're going through as a person with a disability. Rise and know that he is with you and nothing shall, uh, shall otherwise harm you. Either spiritually, emotionally, financially, or physically. You shall not die, but you will live. Some of you have been walking around dead in this coronavirus. You've been physically moving around, physically playing with your, with your kids, physically having romantic time with your wife, physically have physically there, but you haven't been there. You've been off with worry and um comparison and on your phone by the power of the Holy Spirit I declare that you will live and not die you can be physically living but emotionally dead you can be physically living emotionally living but spiritually dead I command you to live in all areas of your life and every dead thing now is gone I command it to leave your body and by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will live. You will live. You will thrive through this. You will not just survive this. You will thrive through it. It is possible to thrive through COVID. You are, you are thriving right now. I declare the spirit of a thriver is rising up in you. Places you thought were dead are not dead anymore. You will thrive. You will not just survive. You will not just exist, but you will live. I declare, live. Live right now. Get up from that dead place and live. 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 Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Live. Live, try bones here the one of the Lord. In the, in Ezekiel, in Ezekiel, I I I forget what chapter, but it says, "Can this dry bones? Can these dry bones live?" And my response is, "Yes, they can. Yes, they will." Uh, when I was in the hospital with pneumonia. The Lord said to me, um, you do not have permission to die here. And I'm saying 
the same thing by the power of the Holy Spirit to you. You, sir, ma'am, student, child of God, woman of God, man of God, preacher, you do not have permission to die. You will live and rise in the newness of life. So declares the Spirit of the Lord. Everything that was against you is now going to work for you. It didn't feel good going down, but it'll it'll be good walking through because you will have learned the lessons from this period. Um, I said a few months ago that if you come out of a trial learning a lesson, learning what you were supposed to learn in that, and it's all worth it. It's like, but if you come out of the trial and not learn anything, it's a waste of time. So you have to keep learning. You have to keep growing. You can't stop. God hasn't called you to stop learning and stop growing. Go back to school, young woman. Go back to school, young man. You can do it. You're not stupid. Whatever your parents told you, whatever that person told you, I command that words of life come to you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You will get that degree. You can get that degree. You will be the first person in your family to go to college. You will be the first person in that family to get that CEO position. You will be the first person in your family to um, uh, do what you're called to do, to start that business, to raise those children. You will not get divorced. I don't care what's happening in your marriage right now, sir or ma'am. You will not get divorced. That is not of God. Your husband, you and your husband have been called together. And you will, by the power of God and hard work and both of you together, you will stay together. Your marriage will not die, but it will live. Your finances will not die, but they will live. I see for somebody out there, I don't know who, um, but I see um, some financial issues. And I declare that God is sending help right now in the form of a friend that you've never know, know. You didn't know that that person even knew about finances, but they're but God is sending them right now. You will get out of that financial mess. He knows that you didn't mean to get into it. He knows that you just made some bad decisions. I've been there too, and it is possible to get out. It is possible to get out. You don't have to drown to drown by yourself. So says the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. We receive it and we believe your word. Not because I'm just a vessel, but your word is yes and amen and we believe it. We believe what you said above all things that you wish we would prosper and be in health. And I declare health for everyone around the world. I declare physical health for everybody struggling with COVID and all matters of cancer and all matters of disease. I declare financial health. I declare marital health, oh God. I, I'm seeing healthy marriages, oh Lord Jesus, healthy relationships, healthy families. I declare that you're breathing life in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Live, live. Try bounds, hear the word of the Lord. Live, 
someone needs to hear it feel free to share it feel free to share it um, because this last part wasn't planned but the Lord had something else to say A and we thank him for his word today we thank him for his prophetic utterance it's not me it's him and I thank you Lord for using me today in such a powerful way Amen. See you later, guys. Bye.